The great vigil of Easter, service of light. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, on this most holy night in which our Lord Jesus passed over from death into life, we are gathered here in vigil and in prayer. This is the Passover of the Lord in which by hearing his word and celebrating his sacraments, we share in his victory over death. Let us pray. O God, you are like a refiner's fire, and your spirit enkindles the hearts of your faithful people with the fire of your love. Bless, we implore you, this new flame and those who keep this joyful Easter festival that burning with desire for life with you, we may be found rightly prepared to share in the feast of light, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The cross is traced on the Paschal candle. Christ Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever, the beginning and the end. Greek letters Alpha and Omega are traced on the Paschal candle. Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega. The year 2020, traced on the Paschal candle. His our time in eternity, his are the glory and dominion now and forever. Some symbolically the five nails placed upon the Paschal candle. By his wounds, we have healing both now and forever. Amen. May the light of Christ, who was risen in glory from the dead, scatter all the darkness of our hearts and minds. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God, pour out on us your abundant blessing that all who in true faith share this night in joyful celebration of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead may be filled with your heavenly benediction. Once we were in darkness, but now we are light even Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The lighting of your candles from the Paschal candle. of angels. Rejoice now, all creation. Sound forth the trumpet of salvation, and proclaim the triumph of our King. Rejoice too, all the earth, in the radiance of the light now poured upon you, and made brilliant by the brightness of the everlasting King. Know that the ancient darkness has been forever banished. Rejoice, O Church of Christ, clothed in the brightness of this light. Let all this house of God ring out with rejoicing, with the praises of all God's faithful people.
The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places, with all our heart, mind, and voice, praise you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God, and your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. For he is the very Paschal Lamb who offered himself for the sin of the world who has cleansed us by the shedding of his precious blood. This is the night when you brought our fathers, <clears throat> the children of Israel, out of bondage in Egypt and led them through the Red Sea on dry ground. This is the night when all who believe in Christ are delivered from bondage to sin and restored to light and immortality. This is the night when Christ the life arose from the dead. The seal of the grave is broken and the morning of the new creation breaks forth out of night. Oh, how wonderful and beyond all telling is your mercy toward us, O oh God, that to redeem a slave you gave your son. How holy is this night when all wickedness is put to flight and sin is washed away. How holy is this night when innocence is restored to the fallen and joy is given to those downcast. How blessed is the night when man is reconciled to God in Christ. Holy Father, accept now the evening sacrifices of our thanksgiving and praise, that Christ, the true light and morning star, shine in our hearts. He who gives light to all creation, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In this most holy night, our Savior Christ the Lord broke the power of death and by his resurrection brought life and immortality and salvation to all creation. Let us praise the Lord for he truly keeps his word. The Son of Righteousness has dawned upon us who sat in darkness and in the shadow of death. Readings and Prayers. The Creation a reading from Genesis chapters 1 and 2. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. And God said, Let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the expanse and separated the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. And it was so. And God called the expanse heaven. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit, in which is their seed, according to its kind on the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their own kinds, and trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons, for days and years, and let them be lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. And God set them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, 
Let the waters swarm with swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the heavens. So God created the great sea creatures and every living creature that moves, with which the waters swarm, according to their kinds, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, livestock and creeping things, and beasts of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds, and the livestock according to their kinds, and everything that creeps on the ground according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. And God said, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit, you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the heavens, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God finished his work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, through your word and spirit, you most wonderfully created all things, and through the word made flesh, you brought new life to fallen humanity. Grant that in your mercy we may be conformed to the image of him who shares fully in our humanity, even Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Flood a reading from Genesis chapters 7, 8, and 9. Then the Lord said to Noah, Go into the ark, you and all your household, for I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. Take with you seven pairs of all clean animals, the male and his mate, and a pair of the animals that are not clean, the male and his mate, and seven pairs of the birds of the heavens also, male and female, to keep their offspring alive on the face of all the earth. For in seven days I will send rain on the earth forty days and forty nights, and every living thing that I have made I will blot out from the face of the ground. And Noah did all that the Lord had commanded him. In the six hundredth year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the seventeenth day of the month, on that day all the fount fountains of the great deep burst forth, and the windows of the heavens were opened, and rain fell upon the earth forty days and forty nights. On the very same day, Noah and his sons, Shem and Ham and Japheth, and Noah's wife and the, and the three wives of his sons with them, entered the ark, they and every beast according to its kind, and all the livestock according to their kinds, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth according to its kind, and every bird according to its kind, every winged creature. They went into the ark with Noah, two and two of all flesh, in which there was the breath of life. And thus, and those that entered, male and female of all flesh, went in as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. The flood continued forty days on the earth. 
the waters increased and bore up the ark, and it rose high above the earth. The waters prevailed and increased greatly on the earth, and the ark floated on the face of the waters. At the end of forty days, Noah opened the window of the ark that he had made and sent forth a raven. It went to and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth. Then he sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters had subsided from the face of the ground. But the dove found no place to set her foot, and she returned to him to the ark, for the waters were still on the face of the whole earth. So he put out his hand and took her and brought her into the ark with him. He waited another seven days, and again he sent forth the dove out of the ark. And the dove came back to him in the evening, and behold, in her mouth was a freshly plucked olive leaf. So Noah knew that the waters had subsided from the earth. Then he waited another seven days and sent forth the dove, and she did not return to him any more. In the six hundred and first year of the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried from off the earth. And Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. In the second month, on the 27th day of the month, the earth had dried out. Then God said to Noah, Go out from the ark, you and your wife, and your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing that is with you of all flesh, birds and animals, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, that they may swarm on the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. So Noah went out and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, Behold, I establish my covenant with you and your offspring after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the livestock, and every beast of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. It is for every beast of the earth. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I will make between me and you and every living creature that is with you. For all future generations, I have set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O Lord, you kill and you raise to life. You brought the flood upon a wicked and perverse generation, and yet you save faithful Noah and his family in the ark. Keep us in safety in the ark of Christ's body, the church, that your mercy may come to its fullness and your salvation be preached to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Testing of Abraham, a reading from Genesis chapter 22. After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. He said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him, and his son Isaac. And he cut the wood for the burnt offering, and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. On the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place from afar. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. I and the boy will go over there and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac his son. And he took in his hand the fire and the knife. So they went both of them together. And Isaac said to his father Abraham, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. He said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So they went, both of them, together. When they had come to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built the altar there and laid the wood in order 
and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, he said, here I am. He said, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him was a ram, caught in a thicket by its horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the name of that place, the Lord will provide. As it is, to this, as it is said to this day, on the, moment, on the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this and not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you, and I will surely multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of its enemies, and in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O God, since you promised faithful Abraham that he would be the father of a great multitude, you provided a substitute for his son Isaac. In the fullness of time you sent your son, the Lamb, who takes away the sin of the world to lay down his life, that we might live as faithful children of Abraham. Grant to all people a living trust in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Israel's Deliverance at the Red Sea A reading from Exodus chapters 14 and 15 The Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Tell the people of Israel to go forward. Lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the people of Israel may go through the sea on dry ground. And I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, so that they shall go in after them. And I will get glory over Pharaoh and all his host, his chariots and his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I have gotten glory over Pharaoh, his chariots and his horsemen. Then the, the angel of God, who was going before the host of Israel, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from before them and stood behind them, coming between the host of Egypt and the host of Israel. And there was the cloud and the darkness, and it lit up the night without one coming near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the people of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground, the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went in after them into the midst of the sea, all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And in the morning watched the Lord in pillar of fire and of cloud, looked down on the Egyptian forces and threw the Egyptian forces into a panic clogging their chariot wheels so that they drove heavily. And the Egyptians said, Let us flee from before Israel, for the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and upon their horsemen. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its normal course when the morning appeared. And as the Egyptians fled into it, the Lord threw the Egyptians into the midst of the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen of all the host of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained, but the people of Israel walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. 
Israel saw the great power that the Lord had used against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord, and they believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the people of Israel sang this song to the Lord, saying, I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O God, you once delivered your people Israel from bondage under Pharaoh and led them by a pillar of cloud and fire through the sea to safety. Grant that we may so follow Christ that through the waters of baptism, we may daily die and rise with him and walk in safety through the wilderness of this life until we see your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Job confesses the Redeemer, a reading from Job chapter 19. My bones stick to my skin and to my flesh, and I have escaped by the skin of my teeth. Have mercy on me, have mercy on me, O you, my friends. For the hand of God has touched me. Why do you, like God, pursue me? Why are you not satisfied with my flesh? O oh, that my words were written. O oh, that they were inscribed in a book. O oh, that with an iron pen and lead they were engraved in the rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and at the last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold and not another. My heart faints within me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, our great Redeemer, in the sacrifice of your Son, you put to death our wretched flesh, and in his rising restored our life. Grant that we may always cling to Christ by faith in this life, that at the last we may rejoice to stand in our own flesh See you face to face, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jonah preaches to Nineveh, a reading from Jonah chapter 3. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, three days' journey in breadth. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's journey, and he called out, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They called for a fast and put on sackcloth, from the greatest of them to the least of them. The word reached the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, removed his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. And he issued a proclamation and published throughout Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed or drink water, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth, and let them call out mightily to God. Let everyone turn from his evil way and from the violence that is in his hands. Who knows? God may turn and relent and turn from his fierce anger so that we may not perish. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil way, God relented of the disaster that he had said he would do to them, and he did not do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh God, as the prophet Jonah spent three days in the belly of the great fish, so your son Jesus spent three days in the heart of the earth. Grant us repentance to embrace our death in him through holy baptism and to proclaim his victory over sin and death to all the world for the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
The Fiery Furnace, a reading from Daniel chapter 3. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If this be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that, there, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was filled with fury, and the expression of his face was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He ordered the furnace heated seven times more than it usually was heated, and he ordered some of the mighty men of his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their cloaks and their tunics, their hats and their outer garments, and they were thrown into the burning, fiery furnace. Because the king's order was urgent and the furnace overheated, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell bound into the burning, fiery furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and rose up in haste. He declared to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king. He answered and said, But I see four men unbound walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt, and the appearance of the fourth is like a son of the gods. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the door of the burning fiery furnace. He declared, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out from the fire, and the satraps, the prefects, the governors, and the king's counselors gathered together and saw that the fire had not had any power over the bodies of those men. The hair of their heads was not singed, their cloaks were not harmed, and no smell of fire had come upon them. Nebuchadnezzar answered and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him, and set aside the king's command, and yielded up their bodies rather than serve and worship any god except their own god. Therefore I make a decree. Any people, nation, or language that speaks anything against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be torn limb from limb, and their houses laid in ruins, for there is no other god who is able to rescue in this way. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O God, your son protected faithful Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace of the king. Grant us protection in the time of testing, that we would boldly confess your name, reject all false worship, and live and die in confidence, knowing that we are safe in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We sing the hymn, All You Works of the Lord.
words of our holy baptism. On this holiest of nights, the whole church of our Lord Jesus Christ recalls his death and burial. Rejoicing with great joy in the gospel of his glorious and mighty resurrection from the dead. The Apostle Paul says, Do you not all know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, him, therefore with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead to the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the, death, for the death that Christ was raised from the dead, death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment, you condemned the unbelieving world to the flood. Yet according to your great mercy, you preserved believing Noah and his family, eight souls in all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his hosts in the Red Sea, yet led your people Israel through the water on dry ground, foreshadowing this washing of your holy baptism. Through the baptism in the Jordan of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. We pray that you would behold us all according to your boundless mercy and bless us with true faith by the Holy Spirit, that through this saving flood all sin in us, which has been inherited from Adam and which we ourselves have committed since, will be drowned and die. Grant that we be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church being separated from the multitude of unbelievers, serving your name at all times with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope, so that with all believers in your promise, we would be declared worthy of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Do you renounce the devil? Yes, I renounce him. Do you renounce all his works? Yes, I renounce them. Do you renounce all his ways? Yes, I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Yes, yes I, believe I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son? Yes, yes I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes, yes I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body,
mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, hear, hear us. Paschal Lamb, who was offered for us and has taken away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Who was crucified for our transgressions and raised for our justification. Have mercy on us. Who foretold your passion, saying, The Son of Man must be crucified and on the third day rise again. Have mercy on us. Who destroyed death by dying and by rising to life again, brought life and immortality to light. Have mercy on us. Whose resurrection was first announced by an angel to the women. Have mercy on us. Who appeared to Mary Magdalene and was worshipped by her. Have mercy on us. Who revealed yourself to the two disciples on the Emmaus Road and made yourself known to them in the scriptures and the breaking of the bread. Have mercy on us. Who appeared to the disciples, bestowing on them your peace and your spirit. Have mercy on us. Who showed your wounded hands and sighed to the apostle Thomas that he too might believe. Have mercy on us. Who appeared to seven disciples in the Sea of Tiberias, bringing a miraculous catch of fish. Have mercy on us. Who appeared to Peter and to the twelve, to over five hundred disciples, to James and to all the apostles, and to Paul on the Damascus Road. Have mercy on us. Who commissioned your church to make disciples of all nations by baptizing and teaching them. Have mercy on us. By your glorious resurrection from the dead. Good Lord, deliver us. By your victory over sin and death. Good Lord, deliver us. By the majesty of your risen body. Good Lord, deliver us. We poor sinners implore you to hear us, Lord Jesus that we may daily die and rise with you in our baptism and walk in the freedom of your forgiveness. Grant us, good Lord. That we may set our minds on the things above and not on earthly things, serving as we have been served by you. Grant us, Grant us good Lord. Lord. That we may dwell with you forever in the new creation as citizens of the heavenly Jerusalem, together with all the saints. Grant us, good Lord. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen! He is risen indeed! Alleluia! Glory be to God on high, and on earth His good will toward men. We praise Thee, we bless Thee. You made this most holy night to shine with the glory of the Lord's resurrection. 
preserve, us, preserve in us the spirit of adoption, which you have given, so that, made alive in body and soul, we may serve you purely. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. And they were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. Entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were alarmed. And he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We sing to him, Come ye faithful, raise the strength.
prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. To him the day of resurrection.